What's up everybody, welcome back, my name is Josh, and today we're talking about three ways to make $100 a day not counting your W-2 income. Let's go. For those of you that know me, for those of you that have watched this channel before, you know I believe in financial independence, retiring early, retiring early because you're still gonna work, and essentially building up those income streams, right? Money buys free time, essentially. So my goal is always to build those different income streams so I don't have to rely on a W-2 income stream. Now with all of that said, a lot of the things that I'm talking about in today's video, you normally need a W-2 income to actually get started, to actually invest, to save, to put money into these different investments and vehicles to create those income streams. So a W-2 is actually pretty important. It's just not my end-all be-all. I want to move away from reliance on somebody else's income stream. So unless you're Bruce Wayne or have invested your life savings into Dogecoin before it actually exploded, then you're probably gonna need a W-2 income source to get started with some of these. The other good reminder here is that this is not financial advice. This video is not financial advice. I'm not a financial advisor. This is just for entertainment purposes and to share the things that I'm doing with my money, the experiences that I've had on my way to making $100 a day in some of these investment vehicles. Again, not financial advice. So for the very first one, we're kicking it off with real estate, real estate investing actually. And I'm kicking it off there because I think that that is the one that has so many different ways of making $100 a day. And I'm just in a very small sliver of the space. And the other piece is that it's a lot more accessible to people than people actually think. The cool thing about real estate investing, multifamily investing, which is I'm most familiar with is the fact that your property will not only appreciate, so kind of like a stock where it's essentially there's a capital appreciation, paper gains, not paper losses, but you can also cash flow. So there's actually income. So there's two different ways of actually making $100 a day. For today's exercise though, we're just calling the income stream the actual $100 a day because that's what we're talking about, passive income sources. So to break down the numbers, 365 days a year, I know there's leap years, but we're just gonna stick with 365. $100 a day, we do the math, that is $36,500. So you would need $36,500 in income from a property to have $100 a day. So to make this easy in terms of running the numbers is we'll actually run the numbers, $36,500 divided by 12 is $3,041.66. So let's say you get a triplex, right? That's divided by three doors, that's $1,000 a month in rent and in a lot of places that actually is probably a little below market rent depending on the size of the property. Let's multiply that by three again and divide it by two. So we actually do a duplex. It's a little higher, $1,500. That, at least in Northern Orlando area, that's probably a little higher than you'd probably find for a duplex. So somewhere in between there, right? So on the rental side, you can do multifamily properties. That's the duplexes, the triplexes, the things that are greater than four two, but that's stepping outside of that residential unit, which is when you're getting started, probably gonna be a little more challenging. That's where I went, that was where I got started, that's the properties I currently own. Then there's also the, the commercial residential, there's trailer parks that you can get into and, and lease units. You can do mixed use buildings where there's, you know, let's say business on the bottom, apartments up top, and even then I'm, I'm still thinking kind of small-minded there where I'm still including residential. Then there's the short-term rentals. Uh, I know a friend of mine who does really well with Airbnb, any kind of vacation rentals. There's also ways of flipping houses too. That's a little less consistent and that's why I like the rental properties, but there's a lot of ways to do it. Why I picked the multifamily route was one, because you normally place a tenant after doing some due diligence, you can kind of run the numbers and you have an idea before purchasing a property, for the most part, what you're gonna make in the property, what you can raise market rents, what you're gonna have to spend on, on renovating the property and making it nice for a tenant. And then I also personally believe that there's a little bit of risk mitigation in both having a longer term tenant and then also making sure that you have more than one door, right? One mortgage for multiple different income streams versus one mortgage for a single family home. Now I know a lot of people that see this would probably also say that short term rentals you can make more money. You can, I've seen 4X, 5X what I normally make on, on the income but I've stuck with multifamily because I feel comfortable there. I'm not saying I won't get into short term rentals eventually but right now as I'm building that up, that is where I want to be. As with any of these income streams, the kicker here on getting started is normally the capital. So what do you normally need for capital to get started? I think the more important piece there is to share that there are a lot of other ways to get money for real estate than just a conventional loan. I've done a couple of videos that I'll just link in the comment section below and there's also gonna be one right there too. 
to talk about the different ways to finance, leverage yourself, you can always do cash. But if you're watching this video and you're like me also, you have to leverage yourself to actually figure out how to get and build your wealth, right? Sorry, Dave Ramsey, I know you're completely against that. One of the creative ways of financing a property, which I have used before, is an FHA loan. All it means is you can put 3.5 to 5% down, also depending on your credit score or your income, but a lot, much lower amount down. The other way of doing it is just doing a conventional loan with less down, also based on your credit, income, assets that you've already got. I'm gonna do some more math here. This is, again, really important because I, I wanna show you that what the actual 3.5 or 5% down is, right? So. Uh, a lot of the properties in this area, uh, let's let's call it a triple, triplex. I've seen four hundred thousand dollar triplexes. So multiply that by 0 0.05. We're gonna go a little higher. That's twenty thousand dollars, right? So that does seem like a lot of money. Which at the end of the day, with the median income, I believe for a family of four sitting at like fifty thousand dollars, that can be a lot of money. But let's divide that by twelve. One thousand six hundred sixty-six dollars. Let's divide that by 30.4, $54 a day. That's kind of ridiculous, but if you go ahead and take that same $20,000 and divide it by two years, that's $10,000 in a year, divided by 12 equals $833 in a month, divided by 30 days, that's $27 a day. You can see how if you just spread it out a little bit that you can actually save the amount of money to get into your first property and then get into the property, allow it to appreciate, and start waterfowling. Again, I'm not gonna dive into all that stuff because that's stuff I've covered in other videos, but you get the idea that you, you can make this happen by putting lower amount down onto a property and getting into it by saving a little bit of money. Number two really doesn't need an introduction, but I will share it. We're talking about the stock market. It's gotten a lot of coverage due to the exponential rise in a lot of the stocks in the market as a whole, but also a couple of crazy things like GME and GameStop and what happened there blowing up and it has nothing to do with the stock and people that haven't paid attention to the stock market in five years starting to do weekly covered calls like me now there's a lot of ways to go about this what i'm most comfortable with is of course the dividend paying stocks both the etfs the mutual funds and then individual stocks that match a couple of my metrics in this video you can go ahead and check that out the reasoning there is because it's, it's kind of like real estate in a sense where the stock market, the prices can actually appreciate. So there's capital appreciation and then there's the actual income, the actual dividends that you receive every quarter. And in some cases, monthly, did I just say quarter? I mean quarter, every quarter. Now where this one gets tricky is the actual capital acquired. I think this one's easier to get into. It's easier to fund and save for the stock market, but to get to that $100 a day, you definitely gotta have some cash in there. I'll take my portfolio as an example here. What I'm doing the math on is the dividend income, right? So $1,000 divided by 12 months, $85 a month, only $2.84 a day. So again, it could probably get me a coffee at Dunkin' Donuts. Sure as heck couldn't do it at Starbucks, but that's okay. The reason I'm bringing that up is because I do need to show you the capital required to get to that $100 a day, right? So $36,500 is $100 a day for the year divided by, let's, the average portfolio I believe is about 2.5%, maybe a little higher depending on what you have in there, but I'm taking my yield so far would be 2.4%, so 0244. 1.4 million dollars actually let's round up 1.5 million dollars in there so it it's not the easiest to get the amount of money you want in there with that said you continue to invest you continue to save you have your w-2 income you have your other income passive income stream that you were talking about before and dividends do snowball and there's compounding return and as you reinvest your dividends you continue to earn more from your dividends Does that makes sense it's this beautiful cyclical cycle i just said the same thing like cyclical <laughs> anyways your dividends earn you more dividends. So capital acquired, again, kind of goes back to how much time you actually want to spend on re researching these individual stocks, but also the time you want to put into investing. ETFs and mutual funds are, are a lot easier way to go because they do track the market and the market historically goes up and you also receive a dividend from that. <laughs> Number three is one that I'm learning and I'm only up to about $30 a day in return because I started on January 14th and that's cryptocurrency. I'm in no way an expert on that and I'm still learning a bunch about it, but the returns are hard to ignore. 
So ways to actually do this are actually getting a wallet. So Coinbase or Uphold, things like that. One thing that I'd recommend and something that I did wrong, in my opinion, in the very beginning is the fact that I purchased my cryptocurrency, Bitcoin and Ethereum at first on Robinhood. And I quickly found out why I wanted to sell that and get that over to Coinbase. And the reason is that you actually don't technically own your cryptocurrency on Robinhood. Really unique. You actually have the right to buy or sell essentially. And that's a big deal. So I'm not going to dive into all of that. This article does a great job at explaining that. I'll post that in the comments below, but you should probably read up on it and actually have your cryptocurrency in an legitimate wallet. Currently, I own Bitcoin, Ethereum, and then XRP. Capital acquired here is really pretty small. A lot of coins are less than a dollar. XRP, when I bought in, was actually 27 cents is what I got in. I think I put $500 in. Total returns over my Bitcoin, Ethereum, and XRP up from January 14th to uh, now was about $30 a day. So not that $100 a day, but getting to it. This is a lot riskier, in my personal opinion, than the other two. There are risks in the stock market. There are risks in the real estate investing. And there's definitely a lot of risk in cryptocurrency. It's becoming more accepted, but it's not technically regulated yet either. So we don't really know what that's gonna look like. The prices are extremely volatile still, but the returns are there where you can actually see almost $100 a day. So that's all I got for you guys today. If you guys like this video, go ahead and press like. If you like this kind of content, anything to do with finances and creating those income streams, and of course, the so-called adventures that I will go on when I actually do record a couple of those, go ahead and press subscribe. If you have any questions or comments on anything that I mentioned or any ideas in the next video, go ahead and leave them in the uh, comment section below. And I hope you have a great weekend. See you later.